Hey there, everybody. A fan with too much time here, and I'm just dropping in today to do a little bit of a response, or a, well, not a reaction video, but a uh, genuine response to one of the latest videos released by the Templin Institute, which is a very good channel, at least the vast, vast majority of the time, um, in response to their video about female space marines and the death of canon. Um, and uh, if you haven't watched the video yet, go ahead and watch it. Uh, they deserve that much from us. They do pretty good work the vast majority of the time, so, you know, it's not right to pile on on people when they have one bad take. But, um... But I do think this is a bad take, um, and I'll go ahead and just explain the few reasons why and, and where I think they went kind of wrong with that, uh, that, that take, which really is all that it is. So don't, don't pile on on them too hard, you know, it's, it's hard doing what we do, it's hard to write, it's hard to make these videos, so everybody chill. But that being said, here is some legitimate criticism of the, uh, of the of the concept and the way they handled it. Um, so basically, uh, long story short, the Templin Institute posits that it is extremely possible that there could be female space marines, that not only could the gene seed implantation process be used more or less seamlessly on um, women, but that it could also be the case that there are entire chapters of female space marines already. And they do admittedly try to, you know, pull up a little bit on that last statement by saying that it's probably unlikely. But, um, there are a few issues with that kind of thing. Uh, now, their main defense for all of this, for these statements, in that they could be the case, even though they're just, they're just not depicted in anything but what might be the earliest, earliest versions of any kind of 40k canon, where space marines are not even what they are today, rather they're mostly just hyped up people in powered armor. Um, the big, uh, there are a few big problems with the way that they took it. Now, yes, 40k canon is amazingly flexible, and I love that. I think that most 40k fans love that, like a lot. Um, that being said, there are a few things that, through en enormous repetition of canon, just, uh, <laughs> can be assumed to not be the case, um, and there being female space marines in existence already is one of them. Now, this is where I think they make their first big kind of blunder, is that it's one thing to talk about the potential for gene seed to be applied to, to, to women and, and work, versus to throw into the bucket, even if you try to caveat it down, the possibility of entire Space Marine chapters being women already, and the idea that, that even Space Marine chapters we know of, like the Blood Angels or the Ultramarines, might contain women already in their ranks. Now, that's a, that's a fun thought experiment that you can try to have, you know, and, and play with a little bit less seriously, and pause it a little less strongly, um, because, you know, what would likely happen if we're trying to be realistic, realistic in 40k, if we're trying to be realistic about it, is that if you implanted a, a female with gene seed from the Primarchs, already we have a, instances where naturally the gene seed is so dominant in the genetic structure of this newly created being that it literally makes the, the other space marines look more like the, the Primarch to certain degrees and take on characteristics of their personality where they wouldn't be there before. There's always some sway in that. So, what would likely happen is that female space marines would technically not have, like, penises and gonads, but they would otherwise look just like dudes, because that's more what the Primarch looks like. And not only that, but that's, uh, you know, all things aside, there is a definite difference in phenotype when it comes to men and women, and men have thicker bones, and the thickness of our bones, and the way they're set down, cause us to have different facial structures, and to be differentiable between men and women, and that would probably get crossed by these female space marines, and they would, they would probably just look and even sound just like normal male space marines, making it extremely difficult to even parse them, or to tell the difference between them. Um, so that's probably what would happen if you did that kind of thing. So it's a fun thought experiment to think, oh yeah, what if, 
what if most, not most, but what if a bunch of space marines in this chapter are actually female and you just have no way of telling? Okay, that's a interesting thing to posit. Um, but you definitely present it, you come on very strong. The Templin Institute came on very strong um, using the standard authoritative uh, way of dictating lore to dictate what is even less than a fan fiction here. And, um, and it, doesn't, it doesn't rub the right way. Uh, and that's for a few other things, but I think this is the first thing that kind of flunders up, is that you combined these concepts together, even if you did try to caveat them down. And on top of that, the, the, the tone that was taken was too serious, and the content we tend to try to absorb from the Templin Institute tends to be less speculative than this. Um, and it came on really, really strong, you know, like really strong. Um, now, we <laughs> we really have no reason to believe that there are female space marines, aside from like the idea that the gene technology of the era shouldn't be limited in that way. And maybe it should, maybe it shouldn't. I'm not a gene scientist. I can definitely tell you that crazier things are done with the gene seed than turning a man from, I mean, turning a woman to a man. Um, but still, it's just, uh, it's just not something that we ever see depicted. Yes, 40k cannon is extremely flexible, but bolters fire physical bolts. They don't fire energy bolts, like Star Wars blasters might. Even though they, you call both of them a bolt, a blaster bolt versus a bolter bolt, um, bolter bolts are a specific thing. They are as described. And Space Marines are a specific thing. They are as described. And they are described as being entirely composed of men. Um, now, I would really like it if we could just hand wave that as the gene technology only enables that. Something about the Primarchs having been male enables that. And I think we should just stick to that because Here's the biggest problem that I have with these things, with the way that it was presented. Without directly stating it, but implying it all over the place, it implies an enormous amount of mindless misogyny in the Imperium. And listen, I'm not saying the Imperium has to be virtuous, it doesn't. But the Imperium does have its virtues, just as it has its tremendous flaws. And one of the few virtues the Imperium has shown by and large is that they're not misogynist, that they don't have, they, they can't, they, they don't have the leeway for misogyny. Um, there are certain planets, very specific planets, where the culture is more misogynistic and women are barred from joining the guard, but we even see that in the Caiaphas Cain books being chopped up and taken apart because it's just not gonna work when you need to combine two regiments together to get something back to full strength and the Administratum and the Commissariat are simply not going to deal with your misogynist bullshit. So, when you imply that there could be whole chapters of female space marines floating around out there who are just called men and given masculine titles and are just made to disguise themselves as men and to never accept or acknowledge or state in any way that they are or were women, it leaves a very bad taste in my mouth because the next question is why? And the only reason is blind misogyny, or at least one of the very few reasons. I, I don't really know what else you could put there. It's like it's some bias against women. And there really shouldn't be that bias. There really, really shouldn't be that bias. Um, it's not a thing that the Imperium generally does, but it's a thing that would definitely be implied, especially if it's like the fucking Blood Angels or the Ultramarines are women or have women in their ranks and they simply refuse categorically, categorically to acknowledge it. Um, it implies a level of toxicity that we don't really want in the Imperium's canon. You know, you can go ahead and say, oh, it's alright for them to do genocide, but if misogyny is too far, yeah, it is. You know, let's, let's, let's not um, pretend here that all these things are equal or that in our modern times there isn't a huge political charge to the very concept of misogyny versus the universal time-tested and time-true uh, horror of genocide, which the Imperium was basically built on. Um, they're different things. They add different nuances. They make the universe feel very different. And one thing that I've kind of liked about 
the desperation of the 40k universe is that by and large, a lot of our modern day sins like racism and sexism have been obliterated from the Imperium, at least insofar as baseline humanity is concerned, because there just isn't enough room to accommodate it. You know, here we are, we're in the deep shit, everything is real as fuck, and so there's no time for that. We've got no time for that. And I've always liked that, but when you apply that to, to, to Space Marines, it really just doesn't rhyme, it doesn't make any sense. And on top of that, we have a lot of media depicting Space Marines working with female guardsmen and Sisters of Battle and Sisters of Silence. And they're never misogynistic. They never look down on any of them for being women. At best, you have some space marines like who are like, oh, wow, so that's what a woman looks like. Because <laughs> they just don't hang around with baseline humans enough and virtually everybody in their chapter is a dude. But you don't really see them disparaging women. Sometimes they disparage mortals or unaugmented humans. But they don't look down on women for being women, and you would have to inject some element of that to make these theories feasible. And nobody wants that. That doesn't enhance the canon. It's not a thing that, um, that 40k fans really want to inject. Um, the Imperium can be many things, but one of the things it's supposed to be is vaguely humanity first, and part of that is that we no longer see race, and we no longer see gender. Um, maybe the Emperor specifically keyed and created the Gene Seed so that it couldn't be applied to women on purpose. And the reason would be because um, he could have done some, you know, internal population logistics in his head and thought, okay, well, the Space Marines may drain an entire generation of all viability if they take both the boys and the girls and with the high attrition rate just leave so few behind that in order for this subtle long-term logistical thing with it when it comes to human population, I'm gonna make it so that so that the space marines can only be men. But but and that would explain it and that would tell you why despite the the vast powers of genetic engineering that they have, female space marines are quote unquote impossible. It's just because they're designed against that and it's not because of a of a bias against women but a logistical perspective taken by a person who's observing what would be endless recruitment into an endless eternal war. Um, and that, I think, could satisfy. I think that makes everybody feel a little better. Um, and hey, if you want to go ahead and pitch around the idea that maybe the, um, the Primaris Space Marines and the Primaris Gene Seed can be implanted into women, sure. I mean, they're brand new. Um, it, it would even have to be a thing they discover unless Call just comes out and tells them. And, yeah, maybe there are some Primaris chapters or Primaris forces that are, are female space marines. And I wouldn't be super against that just because, at least not nearly as much as this, because it wouldn't imply rampant, horrific misogyny in the setting. I just don't want to inject that into the setting. You may think it's more misogynistic that there aren't female space marines, but no, if it's just impossible, it's not misogynistic. And and we should keep it there because we don't want it to go there. Um, a, a big part of this too is that we as fans of various works are now extremely sensitive to race swapping and to gender swapping. Not because there's anything inherently wrong with it, but because it has been paired so many times with a forceful and unnecessary injection of agenda where, you know, real, real world political agenda into what is supposed to be escapist fantasies. Um, and there are just, there are places where that doesn't go. There are places where that doesn't go. That wall shouldn't be breached for all but the most important things. And here, there just isn't a good enough reason to breach it. Um, at least not in my opinion. I don't think that we have such an actual problem in the West with misogyny that we now need to break down the fourth wall on several of these properties, Warhammer included, and force them in. Um, there is balance. You know, there are things that women in 40k get that men never get. Obviously, the Sisters of Battle and their incredible faith powers and their culture, um, and the Sisters of Silence. Are there male blanks? Yes. Can they stand? Can they lift a finger against what is essentially a Sister of Silence? Fuck no. Very different. Very very different power scaling there. Um, and I just don't. 
I just don't think it's healthy to put those things in without a good in-universe reason. And again, to imply that there could have been female space marines all along, and that there have been female space marines all along, and that Imperial propaganda washes them out entirely, that's toxic. I don't want the Imperium to be more toxic than it already is, and that's pretty toxic. So, I don't think there's too much more to say about that. Um, I think it's a pretty hot take. Um, I'm not sure why they made it. I really, I'm not sure why. Um, you know, I am a huge liberal. <laughs> I'm a huge liberal voter. I do not vote for conservatives for various reasons. I despise Trump supporters. Um, I look at the way that the Middle East treats women in mass and it disgusts and like sickens me. Um, I look at the way that that women are treated everywhere, almost not everywhere, but in a lot of places outside the West and how they've had to fight for rights they barely have and sometimes still don't have. And I, I hate that. And I wish there could be something that could be done more about that. And I wish that would be the central address because it's definitely worse. But here in the West, we're doing pretty good with that. You know, there may not be equity of all job positions because there is legitimate difference between the things women want to do and the things men want to do, and that's going to get reflected in the numbers. But I don't think that we're in such a place that this needs to be forced into so many places, especially at the cost of the existing narrative and what the canon had told us before. Because you greatly detriment the Imperium's balls-to-the-walls utility and just, like... We have no time for these, ver for these, to them, legitimately primitive problems when we have an eternal war to fight. You greatly, greatly reduce that when you depict the Imperium as going this far, this hard, for this long, concealing the, the ability to create and then to actually employ female space marines. I mean, the concerted effort that would be required for this to happen. Like, you have to understand this. It's like, you bring up the Leagues of Votan, you know, the Templar Institute brought up the Leagues of Votan um, as an example of, like, lore changing. But you have to remember that in the current lore, that is canon. The Leagues and the, the, the Dawi, not the Dawi, the squads were attacked by Tyranids, but, and they did destroy a lot, but the Votan, the Leagues of Votan, took that opportunity to hide themselves, and it is legitimate that while they weren't actually gone, the rest of the galaxy largely thought they were, by design. By design. So, in the same way, we would have to account that for female space screens, and I've gone in a circle about this enough. The point is just that there's no easy way to mop that up, aside from just to say, look, until at best recently, it's just not been possible to include female space marines because they were not physically able to be created. And let's please just leave it at that. Let's not, let's not make the setting more contentious than it has to be. Canon doesn't need to be ripped up, changed, or recontextualized just for this. It really doesn't need to happen. In any case, that has been my take and my response to female space marines and the death of Canon. Until next time, guys.